Carly. Jay. After their car breaks down in an eerie small town, mm. a young couple is forced to spend the night in a remote cabin in Venus, Oregon. Panic ensues as they are terrorized by three masked strangers who strike with no mercy and seemingly no motive. And that movie is The Strangers Chapter 1, oh. 2024's The Strangers Chapter 1. Oh my God. Jesus, Mary I can't. and Joseph. I can't. It's too much, I tell too you. Too much. This is a uh, this is a remake. Is the, it? We're gonna jump to the conclusion today. So yeah, this is a this is a rare occasion. Mm-hmm. We are going to be talking about a brand spanking new movie that came out Friday, May seventeenth. Yeah, if I got that correct. We don't usually talk about new movies. No, we usually we do talk not. about old movies that we love. That we love, or that we want to discuss. Tell someone else. We just want to, you know. Whatever we want you to see a movie. And this is obviously a brand spanking new movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, brand spanking new episode as opposed to we've been just we've been stacking and releasing. So that's why this if you probably watch the one that posted, I think I want to post this Tuesday, the 21st. Okay. today is May 20th. And today we release them. This is kind of just a a strangers ish. A stranger's Couple weeks. extravaganza. Yeah, she has a stranger shirt. I did not put that on. I think I wore mine for the 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 I, podcast that we did though on the strangers that will come out next Monday, Monday May whatever that day is seventh I think. But anyway, so we're talking about the strangers today because I kind of got an issue. Uh, yeah, I, I got I got this issue going on. It's way too many people. I'm starting to believe that pe- that these critics these youtubers these youtube reviewers <laughs> are are being paid to hate on to this. hate on the strangers chapter one let's keep in mind chapter one now we're gonna get a couple things out of the way so that we can just kind of talk about this movie but i do want to just go straight off the record this movie is not as bad as everybody is saying i'm no. just gonna straight up say that what do you think i agree it's so weird to me leading up to the release of this movie i kept seeing the worst things about it once you know like the week following the week leading up to the release and it was a movie that i was like i'm in like I, the strangers is great they can't i don't think you can really you know Tom and mess man. it up you no, know i mean it's and it's like it's chapter one uh yeah. there is obviously and it has been public that there is a chapter two there's a chapter three coming yeah. all three movies uh, they were filmed and uh, they took place filming in 2022 in 52 days, mm-hmm. 52 days. And that's pretty crazy. And I think that that's I think that that's that's cool. It makes me like. Going to the movies to see a horror movie in 2024, my expectations are already low. Same. Unless it's like Ari Aster is making a movie mm-hmm. or. I can't think of anyone. Ever. Robert Eggers <laughs> yeah, is making yeah. a new horror movie. Yeah. And I don't know, James Wan. It's like, you, you're going to, you know. You're going to have fun with them. You're going to have fun with them. When there's a new horror movie coming out, not, it's kind of it's like, hit or, it could, It's hit or go. miss, you know. Yeah, it's hit or miss. Completely agree with that. And but so like, far. Jay, I've been hearing people be like, this is the worst movie oh, to come out this year. It's and the I worst don't, horror movie We don't year. crap on movies here, but like, this is. No. Not it's even not the worst close to the worst. And look, movie we weren't paid. But <laughs> yeah. if you want to pay us, we weren't paid to talk nice about this movie no. whatsoever. Once again, this is a podcast where we come in. We just we want to talk about movies that we want people to see. And this is a rare yeah. occasion that it is a new movie. But this is a new movie and it is in theaters by the time this podcast will come out. So go see it in a theater. Yeah. Maybe during the daytime, because I will admit I saw this movie two times <laughs> the worst. in the theater yeah. already and it's already been out um because i went thursday night to go see it and then i went on friday. friday night to see it with carly and i went two different times same movie two different locations both that night and i don't know which night had a worst crowd the audience was rough oh my lord and i'm pretty bad if i go to the movies by myself and I'm, and if a crowd sucks i'll get up and leave i don't give a shit i'm just like i'm out i got better shit to do yeah this movie only runs at like 93 minutes long and it was an atrocious crowd the first night that i went and i was like this is so bad the guy next to me 
so Madeline uh, Medall- Medallion Pesh. Madeline you say that? Pe- Pesh. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I don't know. It, Sorry, it looks right. Both these uh, lead actors have interesting names as Froy Gutierrez and Gutierrez. Madeline uh, Pesh. However you say that. Sorry if I'm getting butchering it. Um, but the the guy next to me, the first screening, he he was just like muttering everything going on play by play and then when there's no nudity in the movie whatsoever no sex scenes or anything like that there is a shower scene and there is a moment when the lead actress like straddles the boyfriend and kisses and the guy was just like oh yeah oh like, god oh. Like, what the fuck <laughs> what the hell are you doing bro um and then whenever like something would happen he was just like oh god oh wow no. disgusting people need to realize like you're in a public place Keep your shit together. My thing was when we went. Oh, God. There was a guy behind me that had his feet up right on like the chair next to mine, but like right on the corner. And he kept rubbing his shoes together and they were like squeaking. And I kept looking back in hopes that this guy would be like, oh, maybe. It was actually a 4D experience. It was the man. It was the (laughs) man who was behind you going. I was like, the hell is going on back there? Yeah, I saw that go down and then there was a lady like four seats down to my left no shoes on just has her feet up on the back i'm like what the hell are you doing this is not your fucking living room uh, <laughs> it's so baffling the edit the uh the, the etiquette that people don't have at a movie and the people behind us were talking the whole time people behind us were yapping the entire movie the the, the some dingleberry in the in a couple rows ahead he was just on his phone he's literally on snapchat looking at listening to like whatever some girl was saying on snapchat just i'm just like i don't it I don't, blows I don't get it why go to the movies why go to the movies and spend movies are only movies are about 18 dollars on average in los angeles at this point i'm sure it's maybe 15 probably throughout the rest of the country mm-hmm. and that's not including popcorn that's mm-hmm. not including parking Yo, you're like you're easily having like a 30 dollar night if you're just going by yourself yeah. to the movies why why the fuck are you right? on your phone just and it's a packed house both nights yeah which i thought i was kind of like, i was happy about that i was like applauding that but anyway enough with that so the so strangers chapter point, one go during the day oh and yeah that, to my that, point thank you thank you yeah, yeah, yeah i forget yeah. where i was going i got, I got lost <laughs> i was getting, getting steamed inside but go during like a matinee if you don't feel like being bothered because shitty horror movies and i don't want to say it's a shitty horror movie but mainly newer horror movies that are released that are targeting a younger audience they have a shitty crowd to them yeah so go during the day if you want or wait till it's on vod whatever you want to do but because i yeah i guess like going to experience this in a theater like because of such a shitty crowd like didn't really enhance the theater experience (laughs) no no i agree with you but it was you know Let's first talk about the pie that you got. Yeah, I'm about to dive in. What do you got? I got this blueberry pie. Um, We went to a terror market. Terror. Terror. um, Hosted by Blast from the Past here in Mm. Burbank, California. And this is a pie by Groovy Goodies Bakery. It lit. They have all these super fun uh, treats. Yeah, I posted a... Well, I can speak in the future. Yeah. For the past. It's, I posted a photo of what the what the what the pie it looks was like, like on my page. Little leather episode. face. And you also got cookies as well. I from did, them. and I ate them all. They're delicious. Anyway, this is not sponsored, by the that. way. We you bought it. I didn't participate in the purchase. But I said, Yeah, blueberry. <laughs> yeah. Cause they had strawberry apple. And there was I like know a, a strawberry pie. I kind of wanted to get the the cinnamon one that she was talking about because I was just I, you. I thought it was apple cin- ap- cinnamon apple or something. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was definitely. I thought ap- she said apple, strawberry, blueberry. There wasn't there a cinnamon. Was like a if, cinnamon something. I didn't hear that. Well, that's what she said. She might have. Trust and me, I just, in my brain, I was just like, I want to go for that one, but that doesn't because we we're like, do we pair? Something. What movie do we pair this with? Yeah. Um. Anyway, groovy goodies. Check them out. Groovy goodies. Um, now back to the strangers chapter one. Now I'm going to say this isn't a perfect movie by any means. This isn't a great movie by any means, but I did have a lot of fun with it. And once again, uh, people are, are trashing this movie. They're just like, Oh, it's just a copy and paste of the first one. It's like, well, yeah. Dude, what did you expect? What did, yeah. What the hell are you expecting? And, and, and there's so many movies that are being remade and nobody is expressing their hatred as much. It was like this movie 
And the the new Exorcist movie that David Gordon Green did. Yeah. Came out. <laughs> I don't even know when that came out. Last year. Was that last year? I think so. <sighs> we both were like, yeah, it at wasn't the, at the end of it, I was just like, well, why does everybody hate on this movie? What the hell's going on? But I'm also like, I go into movies not expecting gold for anything. Mm-hmm. I, I go in just open minded, you know, and like, you know, I made a movie and that came out and it wasn't it was publicly bashed on it. It's like it's not a cool feeling. I mean, by any means, I mean, I don't need to stick up for Rennie Harlan. That guy, he's the director of this of this new trilogy that's coming out. He is known for such movies as Die Hard 2, Deep Blue Sea, Cliffhanger, and getting his big break in horror with Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. So he needs no, no, not Oh yeah, he doesn't, but he doesn't need yeah. anybody to stand up for him. He's doing fine. Yeah, he's doing fine. <laughs> so I don't need to pat him on the back or anything like that. But publicly bashing a movie is also just another reason why... Wait, remember when the uh, when the to be continued or whatever popped oh, yeah. up at the end? Oh yeah, this girl behind us is like, oh, "What the?" F-? Like she was like, "This movie is so bad. I don't get it. It's just, it's just like the first one, the original one." And then the and friend then her- next, her <laughs> friend next to her was just like, "Well, it does say to be continued, and it is chapter one." I was just like, "Someone fucking understood what this whole project was." It's just like, like we're not like you like. There's a lot of times where we're just like. You know, the audience isn't stupid. The audience isn't dumb. The audience, you don't need to dim thing, dumb things down. This was a movie where apparently you had to dumb it down <laughs> to be like, look, guys, this is part one. There's going to be a part two coming and mm-hmm. a part three. Like, look at this way. The movie stars Madeline Pesh and Froy Gr- Gutierrez. Gutierrez. Gr- Gutierrez, sorry. Um, among many others who have small roles in this one. But I assume we'll have more pivotal roles in mm-hmm. the other chapters. Like actor Richard Brake, who plays Sheriff Roger. And Emma Horvath, who played uh, Shelley, the waitress at the diner. As well as Janice Aaron, who also played a waitress at the diner. You aren't hiring Richard Brake to just play a non-speaking one-scene role in a, in a movie. Hence, chapter one yeah clearly these characters are going to be more crucial pivotal whatever in part two or part three like why i'm just i'm so just baffled by people's review on this movie yeah and the stupidity like i really like realized i was like damn like we as an audience are stupid and need things dumbed down apparently sometimes sometimes seeing it twice in a theater both times when those credit when those the the credits pop up Mm -hmm. and it says chapter you know to be continued in my soul is like give me part two like i I, I want this like tomorrow yeah and i think that uh, what i saw last was that like august was going to be chapter two and then 2025 is going to be chapter three which i think is kind of stupid that's too late i think look i'm stupid give me all three feed it to me we are in a generation of of netflix where they just hey here's everything and you know you knock it out and that's why also why i think a lot of you know the success of streaming platforms with you know movies like roadhouse wasn't a good movie i'm gonna it's getting a second one isn't it but it's getting a second one because over a hundred million people viewed it at home on the couch in their own home where where there aren't people you know groaning when there's a woman on screen or there's people with their feet on the fucking back of the chairs um (laughs) so it's just like yeah people are watching shit i just don't think people are watching shit in a theater because of the expense and just the terrible time. Like, dude, imagine having like, imagine be like, hey, I'm taking my family. I'm going to go spend, I'm living, I'm going to say in Los Angeles, hypothetical situation. I have, a, I have my wife. I got two kids. I'm going to go to the movies. I want to, I want to, we're going to go see If this weekend. <laughs> and it's 20 bucks a ticket. And then it's $10 a, po- a popcorn. Yeah. Times that by four. I don't know that math, but it's a lot of money. Oh, and then I got to pay for parking. Mm-hmm. That's six bucks. And then if some little shit is on their phone or yapping or t- I'm just like. It makes my blood <laughs> boil. I will say I did go see the new Planet of the Apes movie last night and I had a wonderful movie theater experience. How many people are in that theater? Not a lot. That's, and that <laughs> is why. Um, you put a bunch of people in one room and everyone's just yeah. like, I don't know how to act. Yeah. Um, that being said, this movie came out on Friday and last I saw yesterday, it, it made $11.5 million off of an $8.5 million budget. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Love that. Great opening. Saw this morning that it's at 12 million or something like that. So I'm just like. Good for it. Give me, give me the strangers. Yeah. I want chapter two ASAP. So that's why like, I am kind of curious with how many people are just publicly shitting on this movie, yeah. but it is making money. Are they going to release part two, you know, in theater? Are they going to do part three in theater or are they just going to throw it I straight on so. streaming? I mean, I hope so too. I do wish that they would release chapter two. It's August is fine, but I think that they should release chapter three in October. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's really any need to like expand it out. However, no. I, I would love to see because like, you know, we're in an age where there's so much content. I yeah. I say movies. Content is being produced and put out and you can't see everything. I would have, like, it would have been really interesting to see a fun marketing aspect of how they do this is like Thursday night, chapter one. Mm-hmm. Friday night, chapter two. Man. Saturday night, chapter three. I'll do, would, I'll do you one better and give me a Saturday where all three of them are playing back to back and well, I'll mean, be you, there. You could still go see them. <laughs> I mean, you could still, you know, Saturday night, you can, I would yeah. maybe wait until Let Saturday. Let me pay 25 bucks to see all three of them. Yeah, back that would have been, been so cool. That's like, you're giving an event and this is where, mm-hmm. I mean, this is where just I personally stand. This is why I like when Kevin Smith goes out with a movie and he's just like, oh, you're, I'm going to give you an event. You're going to, you're going to, yeah. you're, you're, we're going to talk about the movie. You're going to watch the movie. We're going to yeah. talk about the movie, blah, blah, blah. It's like that. Like, yeah, they're 80 bucks to do so, mm-hmm. but you're getting an event. You're not just, it's like the old times when you're going to, like, I'm going to get dressed up and go. Yeah. It's like riding a plane nowadays. Like, it's just not a luxury experience, you know? And, and, and I hope to do that with, uh, making a movie soon. It's called Sickleville. I hope to do that with, with my own movie. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, a not hiding anything here, but there's apparently another movie that will be made with, uh, two great people that I work with. And uh, that's what we want to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that part, but sorry. Anyway, um, but who knows what will happen? Anyway, so whatever. Putting it out there—that's what I'm doing. I'm manifesting it. You but are. You're speaking it I'd into. I'd rather existence. give an 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 experience, an event, instead of just I'm going to go to the theater. I'm going to be on my phone. It's like ugh, over mm-hmm. it. Anyway, so Rennie Harlan simultaneously filmed all three films of this trilogy, and the producer explained that the lead star would film scenes for the first film in the morning and scenes for the second in the afternoon, commuting to many different locations for filming several times a day. Sheesh, that's aggressive. That's exhausting. And I love that. Me I think too. that's I think that's so that cool. That makes though. sense though, I especially so if cool. they do it like one, two, three. Yeah, because then like by night. She's probably just like worn out. Oh, yeah. Essentially, I mean, you're pretty much filming like a TV show at that yeah. point instead of a movie. Yeah. But which she was used to Riverdale. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there have been several news articles, and this is what I would really, really love. There's been several news articles before the release of Chapter One stating that the director, Rennie Harlan, intends to release a supercut of the three films, splice and edit it together as a single film. If all films of the trilogy are about 90 to 100 minutes long, which is typical of most slasher thriller productions, then the super cut will be about 290 to 300 minutes long, making it potentially one of the longest horror films ever made. I don't care about that. Uh, Give me it. I'll watch it. I would love that's. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I want to see that in a theater. Same. It's like the same thing, like the whole bloody it's like affair. Grindhouse. It's yeah. A grind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grindhouse. That was like, a, once again, another failed project experience or just whatever, where you're getting two movies for the price of one. You're yeah. getting these fake trailers. And one of those movies actually became a real movie. Two did. Machete did as well. Oh, Machete as well. Yeah. Correct. Sorry. And that movie bombed. I mean, I understand why that could have bombed because they like made it like, and this is why Eli Roth wanted to make Thanksgiving like it's a modern movie. You did know it what bomb? I mean? Grindhouse? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it made I like didn't, nothing. Not in my mind, it did. That's why I like Tarantino was like, <laughs> I'm going back to fucking, you know, Inglorious Bastards. Or I got to revive fair, my career. But I, I mean, people say like Death Proof is like Tarantino is like one of his worst movies. And me personally, what? I, think, I love Death Proof. I, when I watch that movie more and more, I'm like, I think this is his maybe one of his best movies I, that movie's so um, good especially the car chase scene like that oh is it's all real it's not cg or anything yeah. like that. i'm just like this movie is phenomenal zoe what bell is a queen it's amazing but yeah that movie i mean i wouldn't say a bomb but it did not make its budget back that's why we never got more of them because yeah. they wanted to do a bunch of them but it oh, just never man. happened i love that um, movie. crazy but so bringing it back to the strangers where so chapter one like 
I there's just I just maybe it's because we're with every movie that we're now getting it's like oh a possession movie oh a demon movie Mm -hmm. this movie that movie and it's not like we haven't got a slasher movie since Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving before that I couldn't tell you what the last slasher was maybe like one of the newer Halloween movies but it's always just like I mean a theatrical like studio type thing Mm -hmm. um obviously there's way too many just random slasher movies being made not saying my own movie but anyway and i like watching in in the crowd in a theater nice big loud of just a slasher movie yeah and i also think that this movie is really pretty like the framing like all of the shots the cinematography is great yes um I I I enjoyed it. I I totally enjoyed. It. It. I really liked the way that the shot was from from uh way below panning up and the sack head man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call him. All of he, his shots were very like very, picturesque, which is why I think why the newer Scream movie worked because mm-hmm. the way that they filmed Ghost Faced, he was just so badass. Yeah, there. like like Wes Craven obviously like established ghost face and how he presents himself on camera but he never got like sick dope like angles of like shooting from below like yeah looking at just like how taunting he was he is. more like gah, 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 gah. yeah he was just like ah, <laughs> running uh, around Sydney, come here. <laughs> but the newer screen movies i really loved how they portrayed ghost face and just yeah. the way that they shot him and made him look that's that's how i felt with this movie and you know like i'm just curious because i saw like so many people were like you know, like, so, like, who is Tamara? I was like, well, we're probably going to get that. Yeah. The Strangers Pray at Night came out in 2018. Mm-hmm. So we haven't had a Strangers movie since 2018. Yeah. Uh, My math is terrible. I, it's 2024. What is that? Math? I don't know. It's, it's long enough to be like, oh, Strangers forgot yeah. about that movie. Oh, Liv Tyler. And there's a that movie from 2008. So we haven't had a Strangers movie in a while. And yeah. a lot of people were excited when they announced like, oh, we're going to get three new stranger movies i thought it was kind of dumb at first but then i was just kind of like i kind of like that we're gonna we're going to be put into a world of the strangers and i hope there are answers that uh you know who is tamara why are these people doing this stuff like it's going to take us in a whole different direction however you kind of got to establish that first one again i feel yeah and kind of just reset you know it's building the world building a world that's you know great way of of saying it yes and I really liked where this is going. And as I said, it's like, you don't hire Richard Brake to come in to just do one sound. Like, clearly the guy's going to be a more pivotal character. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I'm looking forward to that. Same. But also, I, and this is like, I'm trying to like reason with a regular audience member. People don't know who the fuck Richard Brake is. Like, Richard Brake, to me, I i don't know. I think I first saw him in like Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Mm-hmm. Small part. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. And then I saw him in something else. I can't remember. And I was just like, that dude's really good. And then the last, like, no, when I, I didn't even know that he was in Barbarian. Yeah. And when he was in Barbarian, I was like, dude, I fuck yeah, man. Like, yeah. I fucking, I fuck on Richard Brake so much. Like, <laughs> I'll buy stock in Richard Brake, you know? Yeah. It's just when, when you see Richard Brake in a movie, you just know you're in for something. Mm-hmm. And we didn't get that in this. And he may be the sack man or what, what is that guy? <laughs> Sack I, don't I don't know. know. I really cool. That's a good name. He may be, he may be that guy. Now I'm curious to know. I think that that's what is is interesting. Is it's going to be? We obviously got the home invasion piece, kind of, but sort of like not out of the way in the first one, and so now we're like exploring what happens next, and that's exciting to me. I, like I want to know too. what what else, what comes next. And I think just being as an adult, because I always say like you watch movies like Seven. Like mm-hmm. seven, if that was done in a grimy way, it's, a, yeah. it's considered a horror movie. For sure. To me, though, as a an adult, watching a movie like seven, it's like, oh, it's like an adult horror movie. Mm-hmm. It's mature, you know, mm-hmm. shot well. It's a good story. Blah, blah. And that's kind of like what we get, like with The Witch. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Lighthouse isn't horror, but, um, you know, Hereditary. Th- th- like these are like adult horrors they're mature yeah. horror movies if you will yeah but, but sometimes i just want to see weird people in masks running around stalking people exactly and that's well that's why i think i did enjoy the new halloween trilogy because it's like they were shot really well i mean don't don't get me wrong like dean cundy shot the original halloween phenomenally mm-hmm. don't don't get me wrong but it's rare seeing a well shot horror movie and that has a good story and stuff and yeah i'm the weirdo that likes halloween ends 
I think a lot of people do. No, huh? That was another one. Everyone's like, and like, I kind of understand why that one got shown because like you're doing these first two movies and then like, hey, this third one's going to be a, a left left mm-hmm, field type mm-hmm. movie. So it's like, I kind of understand why people were pissed off about it because it was the closure of a chapter. But like, I don't know. Afterwards, I find myself actually watching that one more than the other ones. Yeah, you loved it. I do like it. I do like it. <laughs> but with this movie, yeah, my, my whole point of just this, this podcast and what I wanted to do today was just like, it's not a bad movie. Mm-mm. It's really not as bad as people say. And I'm not I'm not here to throw shade at other movies, but like I'm going to run down the list of what horror movies came out this year so far. And it's like Night Swim. Sorry, I don't care for it. Late Night with the Devil wasn't bad. I liked Late Night. Yeah, but like I, I don't even want to It's just into a different it. vibe. Different vibes. Abigail. I enjoyed Abigail. Same. Um, Immaculate I enjoyed. Same. I enjoyed. Uh, oh, First Omen. First Omen. Imaginary, Imaginary did not care for. Me either. <laughs> did not care for Imaginary. Um, I think there was like another There's, one. Yeah, one more, I think. But like, I'm not going to publicly shit on those movies. They weren't for me. They didn't work for me. But f- And I didn't see anybody publicly shit on as much as Worst I am seeing. About- I'm like, what? <laughs> as much as I am seeing with The Strangers, I have not, I have did not see for, I'll just say, Imaginary and Night Swim. And Night Swim. And so we felt like we needed to just, spend today just standing up for the, this little guy. With, yeah, I wanted to go <laughs> against the grain and just say, like, get put, give this movie money and talk OK about it. Yeah. There's no need in, like, saying that this is the worst movie because there is this is this not is the first one that comes to the my brain. As I said, this is not a great movie. It's not a it's not even I don't even say it's a good movie. I just had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can have fun with it if they go into it you know, realizing that there are two other movies coming out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, you're getting the the copy and paste, but it's like modernized. Once yeah. again, the last, the first Strangers movies, which we talked about, we're going to be talking about next, next week, week. That came out in 2008. Like when, like I did not eye roll when it's like, oh, there's, they're going to an Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that, that checks out. Yeah. What actually I thought was kind of cool, I didn't really even like think of the use of cell phones in this movie. Like there are clearly cell phones in this movie. Mm -hmm. She's on FaceTime in one scene, but like they kind of like they did it nicely by like kind of getting rid of cell phones. Mm -hmm. And then she has like a Nextel. They did it. They did it right. Yeah. 2024. And I their think approach so too. to it. Yeah. And exactly. Like, the way it was shot was really, really good. I mean, there was some stuff where I'm just like, how do you pop up? How do you go away? Mm-hmm. Type of, like, I, yeah, but it, it's a fucking horror movie. But that's what I like. That's what it's The Strangers cool. is about. Like, it's like any horror movie. Because, I mean, there's clearly a moment that happens. <laughs> what? <laughs> just looking at your hand, like. <laughs> there's clearly a moment. <laughs> there's, clearly, there's clearly a fucking moment where. There's one part that does have more. I'm just like, oh my God, like, yeah, like, and everyone in the theater is literally screaming at the screen yeah. at this one moment. And inside my brain, I'm like, guys, do you not watch horror movies? And I think that we are so used to demon movies, possession movies, where like, you can't just ghost get the fuck out. Like, yeah. you can't scream at that. So I think that like, we're so desensitized, not desensitized, to a slasher movie and how one reacts in a certain situation. Like at the end of the day, and cause you went in like what happens in that scene. I can't, that'll be spoiling something. Obviously the whole reason with this one scene that happens and everyone's screaming at this, at the, the, this stuff. I mean, shit, I guess I can't, I can't even be funny about it of why I was thinking what I was thinking in my entire time in the head. All I'll say is Halloween H2O. And what happens? Well, I guess what happens in Halloween Resurrection. That's all I'll say. And then you guys can go for it. I don't know. There's that one scene that happens where everyone's screaming at the the screen. And yeah. in my brain, I'm just like, this is what horror movies are, though. Exactly. D- don't go up the stairs. Go yeah. out the front door, you know, type of thing. That yeah. was that situation. Yeah. And I just I feel like just people don't see it that much in mm-hmm. movies anymore because we don't get. And I'm not I don't I'm not bashing the movie by saying a dumbed down horror movie. Yeah. We're not just getting like an A to B horror movie. Nowadays. But it was a very like classic genre moment. Oh, totally. You know, absolutely. But like, I think because we are getting like the hereditaries and we yeah. do get the witches that people are like expecting or like nope and get out and all, like these prestigious type hard horror movies that mean that have like social commentary meaning and all this shit that like we don't just get a normal 
fun horror movie. Like, mm-hmm. once again, the last horror movie, and why we didn't do an episode on Thanksgiving is because everybody really actually liked Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving like, was so good. Everybody talked about that movie, and they're just like, it was pretty good. Yeah, I saw that movie three times in a the theater. Twice for me, I think. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Maybe it was three times, because it's that good. It was a fun movie. Like, give yeah. me fun. Like, we're... There's so much fucked up shit going on in the world <laughs> that I don't need serious horror movies all the time, okay? No. I don't need the fuck. What do they say? I want uh, I elevated want, horror. I don't need your elevated horror. Get the fuck out. Just give I me a fun. Pat- I want Patrick Dempsey. I want Patrick screaming. Dempsey as fucking, I mean, screaming spoiler about, alert. Screaming about leftovers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, that's what I want. You know, I don't need seriousness all the time it's yeah. like we live in a fucked up world as it is give me a fun fucking horror movie that's what, like once again so many people shat on the movie this episode has turned more into like sticking up defending bad <laughs> horror apparently apparently but like when everyone shat on tusk Kevin yeah. smith's horror movie tusk dude, i'm sorry i i think that that movie is so fucking good i think that's maybe I'd put that maybe in his top three favorites of mine. I haven't seen it in a while, so I cannot weigh in. I mean, you get Justin Long. I know he is. You get ju- Michael he's Parks. You get Genesis, Genesis, Genesis Rodriguez or Genesis. I'm sorry if I'm. Anyway, uh, Haley Joe Osment. You get a good oh, cast. Yeah, I forgot about. You that. get a fun, just different type of movie. You. Spoiler alert. I mean, but the movie's been out for a while. A24 put this movie out. Mm-hmm. This is one like A24 was like kind of just getting started. Yeah. And. They put out this movie Tusk. Everyone shat on this movie yes. so much. And yes. I was like, totally enjoyed it. But then I started like, th- then Get Out comes out. And I'm sorry, but that's just as fucking bonkers of an idea of a movie of like taking <laughs> people's fucking brains and putting them in other people's brains. It's like, I'm not saying like, I'm not, I, I like Get Out. It Don't get me. I'm, but I'm just saying like, it's a, it's like, it's a bonkers idea. Yeah. It's the same fucking thing as like, I'm going to turn this person into a fucking walrus as opposed to like turning i'm going to turn a person i'm going to take a person's brain and put another person's fucking brain in there sure and make them a different body they're like budgeted trauma movies at the end of the <laughs> fucking day i'm sorry i'm gonna say it but i like both movies but they're both wild ideas and i understand yeah. like get out is a you know the social commentary to it and all that and fucking tess is just like i just want to make a weird movie and I, was yeah. like, I like that yeah give me weird random horror movies yeah and there's a lot of them that are being made and just thrown on tubi or netflix or whatever but they're not like there's a vibe I, like there's a vibe about them that's mm-hmm. not there it's yeah because it's trying too hard to be a shitty movie <laughs> totally but like i don't know the strangers chapter one it was a fun movie i had a fun time with it i saw it twice if the vista was like yo we're gonna strike a print we're going to show this on 35 million. I would see it a third time. I'd see it. I'm really upset that there's not a score available online to listen to because it's not a good, I don't mean like not a good score, but it's like, it, it's, it's a like, very, it doesn't punch out. It's a very subtle. mellow score. I think yeah. to your point, cause I was paying attention to that in the movie and a lot of it's just like needle drops on the record player. Yeah. And which I appreciate it. Yeah. Like but that like, creates the, the last like two scenes of the movie. Yes. Has like, you actually like, he, the score is very front yeah. of it all. And I was just like, I like this. Like this, it's not aggressive. Like mm-hmm. I, I would just throw it on in the background because there's some scores that I absolutely love. But like, if I throw it on my, the record player, I'm just like, this is so aggressive. I'm so anxious. I'm just trying to have coffee in the yeah. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> so at the end of the day, this podcast has gone longer than expected because I, I wanted to just hop on and chat about it. But we're it's like, kinda, well, it's going to be 10 minutes. But it kind of turned into just like, stop shitting on like, just stop shitting on movies that don't, like, it's just like, we're, in, we're in an age where it's like, there's literally so much shit out that's like, why? why? Like, if you don't like it, just move on. Exactly. And that's why it's like, I kind of get irritated with these YouTubers. We're not getting paid, <laughs> so we can fucking say all we want. That that do monetize their channels and they're getting paid and they're publicly shitting on movies. And it's just like, dude, you know what? You go make a fucking movie. Because I would love to see you make it better than The Strangers Chapter 1. Making a movie is a hard fucking yeah and it's, it's it's a horror movie that's yeah. all i could say at the end of the day it's a fun horror movie just go have fun with it yeah I, mean, I can watch friday the 13th part three or everyone's favorite part four and be like there's a lot of stupid fucking moments that happen in that movie yeah. but i still love the movie same there's so many movies like that for me so it's just like what what is people's pick and cho- choose yeah of what what's a good thing what's not a good thing and yeah totally everybody's entitled to their own opinion mm-hmm. i'm all for your own opinion and your freedom of of choice and all that shit like you do you i don't give a shit but i don't know i just i just don't think that this was the movie 
to go out publicly and say to shit on. So, it baffled me. Yeah. So that's and here we are. So w- your so final closing statements here comments. Yeah. Mine are go check out the strangers while it's in theater. Go have fun with it. And I yeah yeah I don't know just that that's that for me. What about you? I concur. Check it out, and then you can decide if you want to proceed with chapters two and three. Yeah, that's it. And it's ninety minutes long. Yeah, it's. Ugh. Imagine sitting so in a easy. theater for like midsummer. Yeah. And then be like, oh, that movie was fucking trash. <laughs> oh like, I just God. wasted two and a half hours and of my, my life. life. <laughs> This is 90 minutes of your life. I think the tra- the trailers felt, lo- if you're seeing it at AMC, the trailers felt longer than the actual movie, to be honest with you. The yeah. movie just gets in, does its business, and gets out. Yeah. And by any means, obviously, the original Strangers is is a super great movie, and we're going to talk about that next Monday here on Will There Be Pie. Thanks for tuning in. Comment in the below. Comment in the below. Comment, Comment in, in the, the below. below. And uh, subscribe, like, share, all that horse shit. You want to say something. That's it. That's it. The end.